if I isolate tannins from a red wine, and you know, as a chemist, that's part of my job is to take a red wine, and I know this doesn't sound good, um, but running these wines through a column, washing out the rest of the wine, and actually just diluting tannins, uh, if you taste that material that comes off of a, a, of a separation column, they're, they're either bitter or they're astringent. But once you've moved that into the red wine system, these are some of the adjectives that are used to describe tannins in, in wine literature sweet, aggressive, velvety, silky, dusty, hard, chalky, round, grippy, fleshy. These are these, are these adjectives, um, and it's really about, this is my job as a research scientist, is to try to help winemakers manage these adjectives in wine more effectively through the vineyard operations or through winery operations. So how would we do that? So this is tannin in our wine. Uh, concentration of tannin is important in terms of how much astringency it is, but also the composition of the tannin. What that structure looks like also dictates and has an effect on how we perceive that tannin. In addition to that, there's a lot of other things in wine uh, that ultimately influence how we perceive the wine. Okay, So we have tannin here in our matrix, and we're perceiving it over here. And these are some of the things that ultimately affect perception, OK? Someone asked a question about glycerin. Well, here's glycerol here. Glycerin is thought to affect the perception of tannin through modulating a, a sweetness of that wine is also, and also viscosity, OK? Ah, no, Fresno State um, does not buy me Chateau Petrus. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I wish it did. It was not part of the perk. Uh, residual sugar. Uh, polysaccharides, organic acids, so these are some of these other things. Uh, one of the ones here, aroma compounds, um, and I put this up there because we have this, uh, as mammals, as humans, uh, we have this um, um, uh, cognitive perception, and there's a lot of things that we, um, that we perceive in wine that helps us to draw connections. And one of these things is green aroma compounds. And one of the things that we find as wine scientists is that when someone smells a green wine, smells uh, bell pepper, green beans, cut grass, they're more likely to think that the tannins in that wine are not balanced, uh, all other things being equal. And so it, it's that cognitive perception in our brain, hardwired to try to give us information and help summarize that wine for us. And one of the things that it's receiving, one of those pieces of information is greenness. The concentration present as a chemist, it's not sufficient enough to actually affect tannin perception, uh, but nonetheless, it affects how we describe a wine. So getting into uh, moving away from consumer uh, wine consumption to wine production, one of the things that we teach the wine in industry is that um, this is how you might consider in approaching um, um, managing tannins in a wine. Uh, you think about things in the wine matrix, uh, whether you need to adjust acidity, uh, think about ethanol concentration, residual sugar, uh, mannoproteins. These are yeast-derived uh, uh, molecules. As the yeast breaks down after fermentation, it releases mannoproteins into that wine. If any of you have done, seen uh, surly aging in, in barrels, that surly process is uh, designed to try to get mannoproteins into the wine and extracted to help increase the, the fullness of that wine, that fill up the middle of the wine. Polysaccharides are another thing. These are all things that you might think of as a winemaker to try to manage tannins. Concentration of tannins is the other. I talked about managing the cap in a fermentation. That is in large part designed to manage the amount that you extract. And then it's the composition, okay? Sea tannin to skin tannin extraction. Sea tannins are perceived differently than skin tannins. The size of the tannin absolutely affects perception, color incorporation, as well as tannin oxidation. Well, if you ask any winemaker and you say, you know, where is the finest wine made in the winery or in the vineyard? And any high quality winemaker is going to say that our best wines are crafted in the vineyard. And it really absolutely starts in the vineyard. Um, um, 
Here's a question here. Is tannin concentration what gives winemakers, reviewers, their best guess as to how long your wine will age? In other words, what do you taste that says this wine could age for 50 years or more? A lot of it has to do with concentration as well. Uh, tannins are part of it. And, and, I, and I'm only speaking about red wines. Um, lower extracted red wines. And you think of rosés as a great example of that. Those are designed to be consumed in youth. Um, as you increase extraction, as you increase, increase concentration, you increase age worthiness. Um, but it's not simply about tannins. It's, a, you know, it's, a, it's flavor molecules, too. And, and I always tell people, the more uh, flavor you can stuff into that bottle, the more phenolic you can stuff into that bottle, and have it still be balanced at the time of consumption, uh, the more age worthy that, that wine is going to become. Okay. So getting back to the vineyard comment, uh, best wines are made in the vineyard. Uh, this is really what I think about with that um, and how we think about wine. It's this balance here. Uh, we're trying to achieve balance in our wine. Uh, ethanol, sugar, polysaccharides on one side, tannin and acid on the other. And how you might describe a wine with too much tannin or too much sugar, OK? Too much tannin and acid. Uh, these, these compounds contribute bitterness, astringency, and sourness to wines. An excess of these molecules, hard, green, coarse, and unripe. On the other hand, too much ethanol, too much sugar, too much polysaccharide. This lends wine, body, and sweetness. Uh, too much of it, fat and thick. So what we're after is really about balance. And what we're after are descriptors that are more akin to adjectives that are associated with balance, silky, velvety, and ripe. And this is made in the vineyard. Um, these molecules are made during fruit ripening. And these molecules are made in the first part of berry development. Okay, So right after a vine goes through bloom, it immediately makes tannin, and immediately it makes these organic acids. And so if you look at a red grape when it's still green, and you taste it just before it starts to change color, it's going to taste like this. Very bitter, very astringent, and very sour. When it starts making red color during fruit ripening, it starts uh, making sugars, it starts producing polysaccharides. And these things counter astringency by adding body and sweetness to our wine. And you're going to get more of these adjectives. And so oftentimes, when you pick grapes too early, you're more inclined to have these adjectives. When you pick grapes rate later, you're going to, too late, you can get these adjectives. Okay? So it's, it's all about that. It's all about getting that, that composition correct. The great thing about tannins is we can very much manage them in all areas of production. And I want to walk you through the last part of this talk on things that we think about both in the vineyard and in the winery uh, with regard to uh, tannin and how uh, winemakers are managing them in today's world. So let's start off with the vineyard. Um, in the vineyard, uh, we think about this transition from green tannins, hard, coarse, unripe tannins, to ripe tannins. And I've talked about that a little bit with the balance, OK? So tannin descriptors suggest that the vineyard plays a role in determining tannin quality. No question about it. Here's some uh, study, a study that I did in, uh, in Australia when I worked at the Australian Wine Research Institute. Um, this is uh, some work that I did with a scientist, Stella Cassara. And this is working with the Hardy's Wine Company. And what uh, we did with Hardy's is we analyzed the number of their Shirazes uh, from very low price points, uh, or very high price points, to very low price points. And what they really wanted to do is to try to understand how the tannin structure in these wines changed as the price point of the wine changed. So this is about a $100 bottle of wine over here. And this was about a $5 bottle of wine here. One of the things that we find is that at very, very high price points, the tannin structure does not change too much. You've optimized the tannin balance, the extraction. And now price point uh, differentiation has more to do with aroma compounds, things that you're doing in terms of uh, cooperage, uh, new oak, uh, uh, and other aspects in the winery. At the very low price points, it's the same thing. Uh, there's a lot more to be concerned about with these low price point ones, price point wines, uh, than tannins. Again, a lot of it's flavor and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. But there's this range here where most of the Shirazes uh, and most red wines, to be honest with you, are produced. 
And most of this is in the vineyard in terms of differentiating high price point wines from lower price point wines. And we can see that there's some very good chemical markers that we can monitor that help associate us with price point in terms of wine. The concentration of tannin, the size of the tannin. Larger sized tannins tend to be purely astringent. Lower sized tannins can start to impart bitterness. Uh, percent epigallocatechin. This is a, a very specific tannin molecule that's associated with skin tannins in the, in the berry, okay? Generally th considered to be a more developed tannin, silkier tannin, velvetier tannin uh, than, than a C tannin. Pigmented polymer, this is um, our uh, stable red color in our red wine. So the more stable red color, uh, uh, the higher the price point of that wine. But also, tannins that are red uh, are perceived differently than tannins that are not. Okay, Tannins on their own are not, they're colorless. Okay, And overall color density. Someone asked about uh, uh, tannin structure, skins or seeds. Uh, seed tannin, uh, if you've got bitterness in your wine, is from seed tannin. Um, and so if you're trying to minimize seed extraction or minimize bitterness in your wine, you're spending a lot of time trying to uh, minimize seed extraction relative to skin extraction. Uh, skin is considered to be a more developed tannin, uh, velvetier, silkier, uh, a more purely astringent uh, type of a tannin. 